Webflow just changed the game by adding custom CSS properties. This means nearly any property and value we can set in CSS can now be added in Webflow and changed across breakpoints. Be sure to check Can I Use to make sure that your property and value is actually supported across major browsers. So let's look at the top properties to set. We can set fluid font sizes using a unit called container query width. So if we give a font size of 24.9 CQW, this is based on the width of some parent element. To define the parent it's related to, we can grab this parent div and give it a custom property of container-type and a value of inline-size. By doing that, this font size inside is now based on the width of this parent div. So notice when we increase or decrease the width, the font size inside is growing and shrinking. This is better than calc or media queries because it's based on the size of the overarching parent. So this has a rim max width, and if we decrease our font size or increase it, then when the container grows and shrinks, the fonts inside will also grow and shrink. Now, below the container's max width, when the user bumps their font size, everything else increases, but this doesn't increase, this heading, because there's no room for the container left to grow. So that is one accessibility issue and why I would only recommend this for larger headings that we're trying to force to fit within a certain space. But this is much better than viewport width because here we have a rim padding left and right. And if we would apply viewport width, eventually this text would overflow past that padding. But here it's strictly based on the remaining space available within the container. Clip paths are another great use case. I'll leave a link to this site in the description below. Let's select the trapezoid option. Notice how the dots are color coded. This red dot is 20% from left of its parent and 0% off the top. We can make this 0% from the left and 20% off the top if we'd like, but I'll push this over. This green dot, I'll do something like 74% from left, 0% from top. Let's go ahead and copy this whole thing over and we can head over to Webflow. With this panel selected under custom properties, we'll paste our clip path. Now we wanna control where this point falls a little bit better, not just based on percent. So our card has two rim padding on all sides. What we can do under this clip path where it says 74, let's make that 100% from the left of its parent so that it goes to the edge. And then we can wrap this in a calc, which just allows us to do a little bit of math. We'll say 100% minus two rim so that this is pushed over to exactly end where our container padding ends. So now that we have that set, what if we want to make this a bit more dynamic? This card padding is all linked to a Webflow variable called card padding. We can just copy over that Webflow variable like so and head back to our clip path. So here where we've hard coded to rim, we can delete that and just paste in our Webflow variable so that if we ever change that card padding, then the clip path will always fall in the right spot. Now, this text looks a little bit closer to this edge than it does to the other, and that's just because of our clip path cutting into our card padding. We may want to increase this right side a little bit to account for that. So what we could do with this right side selected is set it to custom, and here we can pass in a calc as well. So we can paste in our card padding variable and multiply that by two. So whatever the card padding variable is, we're going to double it for our right padding. And once we hit enter, notice how this right side padding is much larger and it's all based on the original card padding, making this feel more comfortable. Now, this is still looking good here, but when we come to responsiveness, this is getting a bit tight. So what we can do is set our size on this to 100% width, and I might grab this entire parent, give it some bottom padding so the image is a bit taller, like so. And then we might want to change where things fall here. So we might want to switch our padding here back to our card padding on mobile. And we might want to set the clip path to cut the bottom instead of the left. So we can edit our clip path here. We'll replace our calc and just set this back to make this point 100% from the left of its parent, like so. And then we want to edit maybe this point here. So if we look at this, this is for the first point, this is for the second, and this is for the third point. So we want this point to still be 100% from the left of its parent, but maybe we can try something like 80% from the top. So that's making our nice split here. But then if we want to replace this even more, we can just throw back in our calc, and we can say make this 100% from the top minus whatever our card padding is. 
And now that we run that, it's gonna exactly end where the card padding ends. If we're animating an element with move, scale, or rotate, sometimes we'll notice the performance can be a bit choppy depending on the element we animate. To fix that, we can apply a will change with a value of transform to the element. This just lets the browser know we're gonna be animating the transform and it can help smooth out the performance. On our publish site, when we hit top or bottom of page, we have this annoying scroll bounce. To fix that, we can go to the body, go to the body all pages tag, and we can add a custom property of over scroll behavior none. This just removes the scroll bounce. If we have any elements extending past the edge of our screen, we can experience this horizontal scroll. To fix that, we can select our entire page wrap and give an overflow clip this removes the horizontal scroll while still allowing for sticky elements inside. We'll notice all our links in Webflow have a blue font color by default. We can go to the All Links tag and natively we can set the color here to a custom value of Inherit. Then it'll just inherit from its parent's font color. This is one of the many defaults we should be setting on different elements. So to learn the top defaults to set to set you apart from other Webflow developers, check out this video here.